welcome to Nelson All Over. Today I am talking with Justin, who's the Chief Creative Officer at Fireside Games. Welcome to the channel. How are you doing, Justin? I'm great. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm super excited to talk to you about some of the new stuff that Fireside has been working on, and specifically you have been working on. And oh, yeah. that is the Castle Panic 2nd Edition, as well as the Crowns and Quest expansion. And so... Yes. It's pretty exciting stuff because we met <laughs> at Gamma earlier this year. I can still say this year, even though we don't have that long left. But we met at right. Gamma this year. Right. And I got to demo, uh, I think, the just the original Castle Panic, not second edition. So I'm excited to hear about that. And then we're also going to talk about what it takes and what goes into designing expansions and how you mm -hmm. look at that from a creative perspective. But mm -hmm. I'm very excited for the conversation. I hope you are as well. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Those are all good things to talk about. It's all very much the meat and potatoes of what we do as publishers. So yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. So Castle Panic has been out for 13 years now. Mm -hmm. That's that's <laughs> impressive. We yeah. I was so I was actually talking with one of my friends um on a stream earlier this week is like when when can you consider something a uh a classic or like mm. what, what's a classic game and we're like is it 10 years so is castle panic a classic game in your eyes is, do, you, do you see that with the evolution and how many board games come out in this day and age do you consider castle panic a classic i mean i kind of do at this point it's just been around forever it feels like uh which <laughs> yeah. is really weird because i still remember working on it on day one but yeah no it's it's been one of those things where it's our best seller still it's not That's even awesome. like we're just like sitting on this slow mover <laughs> it's the one we have the hardest time keeping in stock these days and and now we have the new version and all that but yeah no it uh it came on strong and has really not slowed down that much so i feel like we we kind of hit the nail on the head with our plan of let's make a game that's kind of gateway but you can play it mm -hmm. if you want and then of mm -hmm. course the expansions to add add more uh yeah it, it's i think it counts that way at this point i'm willing to chuck it in the, the uh, <laughs> classic bin that sounds perfect good. perfect i love that so so since it's been out it's such a great seller for you what prompted the conversation around releasing a second edition right well part of it is it's been around for so long i mean if you think about any other game that's been around 10 years or so how many versions have they had like the one i always think of is i don't if you ever pay attention to Catan, the settlers of Catan, that's gone through like six different art upgrades that don't change the game really at all but they like refresh the cover they'll change the way the card looks and also that was one of the things that kept coming up is like yeah we, we need to like just freshen it up and that was a huge part of it um it, it was it's a game that's over 10 years old its art looks kind of 10 years old um it needed to be brought up to kind of modern tastes and aesthetics and also we had some issues with things like diversity and stuff we did a really mm -hmm. bad job on that not intentionally just laziness and, and forgetfulness and also rushing to get the art done when we did the first printing but that's a whole other story um and also I, there's a few things i always want to tweak in terms of graphic design and readability um what we didn't have were things that were massively broken in the game there's nothing that was like, oh, wow, this one rule is really broke. We fixed all that like the second printing. So this yeah. thing's been solid as a game for literally over 10 years. But we just knew it was time. And we've been talking about this probably for over six years, I think. We, we've revised our cover a couple of times. It has had, I think, three different covers of the old version. But this is the big one where it's like, okay, it's time. Let's let all new characters. Let's make everything different. Let's brighten it up. Let's make it more readable. And that was what we did. Nice. Were there any like big surprises or because you've been talking about it for six years, was everything in the second edition kind of a known quantity when you went into developing the second edition? We pretty much knew what we were getting in for and we had very specific things we wanted to do with second edition. So it's weird when you're revising a game that's been around this long. It's like we've we've shaved off all the corners that we want to shave off. So this really came down to what specifically do you want to fix graphically? What do you want to fix visually? And, and you know, is there anything from a component a dimension that you want to fix it was very very focused on that so um no real surprises there we kind of went in with a good plan and and what we got came out of it so uh yeah i think we nailed that pretty good also um i mean when we get into the expansions we can talk about that but this is going to be the fourth expansion when we get to that so we've kind of done a lot of that too and knew what we were headed for so we we got lucky on that end nice and so let's just jump right into it then so the the expansion brings a lot of stuff it's, it's a modular expansion talk to me about what the expansion brings to the game uh, so the big thing it brings, it, it, it gets its name from the two big components. Uh, the crowns are the characters. There are 12 playable characters you get in the game. Each one has an in-game effect 
uh, one of the fun little details is that uh, in Castle Panic, you're trying to defend the six towers in the middle of the board. Well, your character in the beginning gets a little marker that assigns it to one of those towers. If that tower gets destroyed, you lose your ability, unless you have a, <laughs> a backup tower to go to if you're playing with less than six people. But eventually, you're going to run out of towers and start losing your abilities. You, the player, are still in the game, but you don't have that sweet ability. And I love that. That, yeah. that brings a whole new level of strategy <laughs> to the game. Um, and then the quests are the, uh, the, the next thing it brings. And these are essentially like missions that the team has to go on all players yeah. have to work towards cooperatively completing these missions because that's how the game ends now when you're playing with crowns and quests you're going to go through two quests and the pile of monsters that used to be the trigger for the end of the game doesn't matter it will refill over and over <laughs> until you complete these quests which means you've got to have this mental switch of like wait guys we can't just keep fighting monsters yep. we have to go yep. <laughs> look for the lost treasure or kill this one mega boss guy or whatever and like you have to go on these adventures and it's just a ton of replay with all of them um, so um, th those are the two big things where it gets its name from. You have the royal family type characters and these quests to go on. And the changes in strategy, I love. Watching yeah. people have to make that shift from... <laughs> In the old game, like, oh, no, we're going to lose a tower. Well, so as long as we have one left. And now it's like, no, we're going to lose my tower. Yeah. And I'm not going to have an ability. And my ability is better than yours. So we're going to lose your tower instead. You know, it's yep. very interesting yep. to see. Yep. Those you have a vested comments. interest in specific towers now. Yes, exactly. It matters. <laughs> yeah. that, that's incredible. And then I, I do really like the, the quest as well because it mm. – provides a lot of variety to the game and can bring yes. back a lot of different uh, ways to approach the game. Now, one thing I wasn't quite sure on, because I have not yet to, I have not been able to play the expansion yet, so mm. for part of my ignorance here for a second. No, no, with the quest, are they random? Are they always like a paired, like you always do quest A and B together, or is it a randomized set of two quests? It's a, a randomized set, a semi-randomized cool. is probably yeah. the best way to explain it, because there are... Um, uh, what we call standard quests, and then there are end game quests, and you're okay. always going to take one of each, so you have sort of a, a beginning of your movie and an end of your movie, sandwich, that's cool. kind of thing. So yeah. you're always, and now if you wanted a shorter game, you could just do a single quest, but most of these don't take that long, and they're right. you really you want that victory of the first quest because the standard quests all have some kind of reward they give you when you complete it that gets that's you ready cool. for the end game quest because the end game quests are nasty, <laughs> so you're gonna want that little bonus, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's really cool because I love it when expansions will do that and make it so that you, if you don't want to, you probably don't ever have to play the same game of Castle Panic, um, right. unless you wanted to, like, okay, this quest four and seven are kicking our butts. We, I want to, I want to play this one until I win. Right. And or you can randomize it and just experience the the different combinations yeah. that you can get. Love and, it. and the way one of them ends is going to change how the next one begins. Like if you yeah. absolutely nail the first quest, you may be in a great place for that final quest, and it might almost be easy. On the other hand, if you barely crawl through the first one, oh, are you in for a rough time? Now, obviously, there's a little bit of a gradation scale. Not all of them are super hard, but the end game yeah. quests are rough. The big thing about the end game quests is they give you the mechanical means by which the game will actually be won or lost. So instead okay. of just beating monsters, this is like, oh, you have to teleport the castle to safety. You have to rescue these people. You have to close the, the caves that the monsters are coming out of. So it's this new way of hitting it. And again, like, that's great if you come into that with all your cards and everybody's got a tower and you got all your powers. But if half of you are dead and somebody's got no cards and you got this really <laughs> nasty thing you got to beat, oh, it's a whole You're in trouble. Story. You're in trouble. Yep. Excellent. Okay. And I realize that this question may not be super fair, but do you have a favorite part of the new expansion? I mean, uh, <laughs> I... I'm so torn. I love the characters because of all the, the strategy they change. And some of the abilities are just so cool that, we, that when they pop in and at the right time and you just nail it, oh, it's so cool. Um, but the quests, I mean, the story they build and the way you have to change completely how you think about playing the game. All the other expansions have added to the game, but they primarily add like a new monster you have to deal with somehow and a new thing you get to do as castle players. So you're kind of just playing more Castle Panic. This is like a totally different way to do it. So to answer your question, no, I love all my children equally. <laughs> and that's I think that's the correct answer. That's the one everyone gives me. So <laughs> but it's, it's so hard to pick. It's so, so hard. Yeah, no. And so so this is the fourth expansion for Castle Panic, right? Yes, that yeah. is correct. Okay, so when you're thinking, let's talk a little bit about the design process around an yeah. expansion. So when you are when you built Castle Panic. It came out 13 years ago. I'm sure you worked on it before 13 years ago. Um, <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Especially since, you know, you have a game that's held up for that long. You probably didn't do that on Sunday evening and release it on Monday. So. No, exactly. <laughs> but with, with 
the expansion development. Did you have ideas for specific expansions when you were developing the base game? Did they come out of playtesting? Did they come out of the 13 years of knowledge and, you know, experience that you have with the game now? How mix of both? How, how did that work? Yeah. Um, no, great question. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of both. When I was working on the very, very base game, we had some ideas in it that were a bit uh, like more magical and they were cool, but they felt like a little bit like we were starting something new with it kind of. And also this is, you gotta remember, this was like 13 years ago. I was showing this game to people and it was blowing their minds. They didn't understand how to play. We had to like walk them through it. So people weren't as versed in games and mm -hmm. our gateway game, we really wanted this to be approachable by anybody. And we were finding some of the more magical bits got confusing and we're like, okay, you know what? Cut those off. Let's do a magic expansion. Let's just lock cool. down the like Lord of the Rings type experience here of defending this castle. And here yep. we go. Now you know how to play. And right away, that was the first expansion was the Wizard's Tower. All the magical ideas, plus a bunch of new things I wanted to introduce, new monsters. Um, those all, I won't say it wrote itself because we still put a lot of work into it, but we <laughs> right, definitely yeah. had a very solid base for that. We knew we wanted to do another expansion about a really big, scary boss guy coming. Okay. And that eventually okay. became the Dark Titan expansion. Yeah. Um, along the way, uh, we had wanted to build more contraptions and things like like build traps and stuff like that and we didn't really have a means to do that so that got worked into um engines of war uh i will say i have to give a huge prop to our fans though we had tons of people reaching out to us going oh man it'd be cool if you had a monster that did this and <laughs> gosh i wish i had a character ability or something and yeah i just made notes and notes and um to give full credit a lot of those um if you if somebody gave us an idea they're in our rule book and a special oh good for that. that's cool we that's actually really cool. credit them if they did that so it was yeah. kind of a mix of I've got like a 20 page document of all things I can do in Castle Panic and I pull out whenever we make an <laughs> expansion the things that make sense. Yep. It's not 20 pages anymore. It's getting lower. <laughs> but we also <laughs> always get feedback and people submit cool ideas. I'll see something mm. on BGG where somebody's like, "Hey, what about this?" I'm like, "Oh, that's a neat idea." That's a really um, cool idea. I like that. Yeah, nice. so it's 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 a mix. It's very open-ended and it really just comes down to what's going to be the most fun, you know? I, yeah. I don't really care who gets credit. Just is this cooler than my idea? Great. Is my idea a little better? Awesome. <laughs> yeah okay so with the 20 pages of stuff and i i i had i talked recently to another game designer and we talked a little bit about balance and how you balance mm. around a core game when you're adding in elements especially when you get to like four expansions right that's a significant amount of expansions that you can add into the game how do you go around balancing all these strategies is it just a significant amount of play testing or what do you do yeah that is that is the uh the hardest thing to do, I will say, is uh, <laughs> figuring out how people are going to play and what you want them to do with the new expansion. Yeah, no, there's no question. That's absolutely massive. For me, it's a little bit of brute force. Um, it will. I'm I'm pretty familiar with the system, so I kind of know where we're <laughs> going to have like, oh, this is going to be confusing, or oh, people are going to want to do this this way and it's going to break. So I I'm able to take a lot of the thorns out before we do anything, and then sure enough, something will come up and play test. Um, and then it really does come down to like, okay, here's how all the monsters are going to work, which means I need to think of all the rules for all the expansion. Like, we introduced fire in the Wizard's Tower. It burns, and had to think of, like, okay, how does this work with fire? Once we do that kind of stuff, it's test, 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 and yep. wait for somebody to break it and try something <laughs> we never saw and go, aha, I need a rule for that. Yep. Um, and that does get really hard now that we're this far in, because when you think of all the combinations you can do with the different yeah. expansions, wow. Um, that was a challenge with Crowns of Quest. The one nice thing is, Crowns of Quest on its own does not get mixed in with the game the way the other ones do. The other games okay. you actually take monsters from the new expansion and mix them into the pile. You'll take some monsters out so the game doesn't get too long. This one doesn't work that way. It is a complete like standalone in the sense that you just drop it on the table and start playing. You don't have to mix anything. There's no cards that get shuffled in. So that made it way easier because now it's a matter of like making sure that when you're doing a quest, certain events and characters or, or components just know how they work with all the other expansions and it clicks in. But yeah, no, I won't deny it all. That, <laughs> that is the thing that keeps me up at night going, oh, if we do a new expansion, now I have to figure out how this rule works and that rule works. And yeah, it's challenging. <laughs> Was it, has there ever been like the greatest, like, or the biggest, like, oh shoot, that we need to address that pretty quickly when it comes up in playtesting or someone breaks the game just significantly with some of the... Oh, yeah. There's almost <laughs> always that moment where somebody's like, you you can't... Oh, I guess you can do that. Oh, okay. I got to go back uh -oh. and think. Yeah. Yep. The worst part is... Well, and I'll admit, it happens sometimes after it's been released. We test the beans out of stuff, but somebody's going to crack something and go, hey, how does yep. this one rule work? And I'll be like, no one's ever done that before. Yep. I actually got a... I had a guy... 
I want to say about two months ago, email me something in, I want to say it's the Dark Titan, he had a rules question, and I had to stop for a minute and go, no one's ever done that. <laughs> like, he literally got this perfect storm of situations, and I'm like, wow, let me go back to my original <laughs> notes. Like, it was deep. So that's the other fun thing is we've kind of got, like, this Lego set now where yeah. people can plug in all the different bits, and every once in a while, somebody will do something where, like, oh, yeah, you're right. This one rule says that, but this rule says that because no one's ever done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and... Oh my gosh. I play a lot of card games and mm. that there are some contradictions and rules. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Things, cards getting outlawed and banned and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. We haven't been that bad and we've had it. We've issued FAQs and stuff like that whenever it comes up. The nice thing is part of second edition is getting all that into the new rule books. That's and good. Everything. So yeah. it's all as clean as it can be. So are the old expansions compatible with the second edition base game? I mean, they are. The only issue is you're going to have, um, you know, some visual differences. Like the okay. card backs would be different and stuff like that. But rules-wise, they're essentially the same. We made a couple of rules changes to two of the two small expansions, the uh, Engines of War and Dark Titan. There's a couple of monsters in there that, looking back on really, I just should have pulled the trigger and pushed them one way or another. We have boss monsters in Base Castle Panic, and we have mega boss monsters in the Wizard's Tower, <laughs> and they work different. The yeah. biggest difference being the mega boss have an effect that stays in play until they're dead. The regular boss monsters, they just do it on spawn, and then they're just regular monsters. Um, I made a new series of monsters for those two expansions that kind of are in between. And looking back, that was dumb. It just made the game more complicated. So what we've done is we've taken those monsters that have lasting effects and are more powerful than regular monsters. We made them mega boss now, so they follow the standard mega boss rules. So that would be a little different. It's not that big of a game change. It's more about streamlining rules and making it easier to remember everything. Um, but yeah, if you're going to sit down and play with the old version, you can still do it. Um, you will have that problem, though, where you'll be looking through the deck and go, oh, that's from the new expansion. But, you know, just leave your cards and that problem goes away. Yeah. Uh, or, and that's one thing that's beautiful, you don't have to worry about with Crowns and Quests, because there is none of that combining. It's completely, perfectly matchable with First Edition, no problem whatsoever. Oh, cool. Okay, that's good to know. So, so part of what Crowns and Quests comes in with is the crowns and the asymmetrical playstyles, which is one of my favorite things that an expansion can add to a game. I really appreciate asymmetric. That's just one of my, like, things that makes me happy inside. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, when you're developing these asymmetrical powers and going in, how do you... How do you develop those? Like, how how are you think? Are do you think about how they approach the game differently? Different strategies. Mm -hmm. Like, talk me through kind of developing asymmetrical powers. Yeah. So for a game like Castle Panic, it's a little tricky because first off. Um, players don't have like a uh, personification in the game you are just the castle so that was one of the weird things but that was also one of the early i mean early this is like one of my first notes in castle panic is we should make characters and i had all these ideas for what they might do that has finally come to fruition now <laughs> yeah. um after years and years and it was one of those things where we knew there were things we wanted to do that let people essentially break one of the core rules in a really cool way like this person normally only gets to discard one card well this guy gets to discard two uh normally it takes a brick and a mortar to build the wall we have a character now that can build a wall with a brick or a mortar, which means he can build twice as much. Yeah. So we're we're pulling on established mechanics that we know work. Um, several of them are about uh, handling your hand. You guys like dig for cards differently. Then there's others that manipulate things on the board, like you can make attacks differently, uh, stuff like that. And these were all pretty well-established uh, levers I wanted to pull on. We knew we weren't going to break anything. Well, obviously, you know, you can superpower <laughs> somebody. But uh, we knew these are the kind of things we wanted to do. And also, um, years ago, when I worked on Star Trek Panic with uh, USAopoly, I got to sort of trial run this idea of characters by giving the crew for the Enterprise cool. uh, abilities. And we knew it worked. We were able to see also where the hiccups were and what to avoid. Um, like some powers sound great on paper. And as soon as they hit the table, you're like, oh, that's horrible. That'll never work again. <laughs> so, um, so that was the thing. Like I had been chewing on these for a long time mm -hmm. and then we when we decided we wanted to go with 12 because castle panic can play up to six players so in mm -hmm. theory that means you could do a six player game twice and not play the same character that's cool um until you played your third one uh so going there we did have to dig a little bit deeper but that was also fun because we knew uh, we've come a long way since the first version of the game but we had new abilities we could tweak and twist and all that and stuff so um i think it comes from you know knowing the system really really well and what can you bend and and, and break? Yep. Kind of deal. Yep. Uh, some of these are going to be pretty obvious. You know, uh, in a lot of games, I see people get to manipulate die rolls. That's a great character ability. It always feels good. Um, there's so much you can do. We've seen so many things now. It's it's so easy to push on. But yeah, for our list, we knew it pretty well. We knew what levers we wanted to pull, and it was good. Yeah. Do you have a favorite asymmetrical power? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do love all my children, but I yep. have to say. 
oh the characters oh they're so good part of what i love about it <laughs> is the synergy you have a, like say you're playing with three or four of the players your ability and the other guy's ability might start like synchronizing like oh i'm gonna hide this card here and you get to oh get that's it. cool oh, yeah so, yeah yeah that kind of stuff is great but i will say one of the ones i love is probably the weirdest that i think most people are going to overlook and it's the king we call him king aiden okay. his power is that he can either give one player a full hand of cards or he can let everybody draw one card Ooh, right away so okay. his power isn't great for him it's great for the team yeah but, omg is it great for the team <laughs> i mean the right time you give somebody a full hand right before they're ready to go oh massive and and it's also it's trick. it's hard to you can't really spam it because it's only on his turn if he doesn't right. every turn yeah. great, that's every however many times right but his is really good and then the other one i like that's more combat oriented we have a character called hamari she's a, a like a multi-class warrior oh cool she yeah. has the ability when you when you play play castle panic your cards are based on the ring that you're hitting in so we have the three core rings a swordsman knight and archer okay. normally like a red archer only works in the red archer ring but with her, she can push or pull her attack by one space. So if she has an archer, hmm. she can push it to the forest, which normally That's you've cool. never been able yeah. to do before. Yeah. And if she has a swordsman, she can pull it to the castle or That's anything cool. in between. Only once per turn, though. So she can't just bang this out all day. But if you've got that one monster that you just can't hit, she might be able to. And there's things like that in the game that are just so good. But those are the two that jump to my mind of like, they read so simple. It's like, oh, you can adjust your attack by one ring. Oh, do you realize how big that is? Yeah, <laughs> how the so consequences good. and the fallout. Oh, that mm -hmm. that's really cool. And then also seeing how like the king can interact, or any of the asymmetrical powers can interact with mm -hmm. other ones at the table. And so the yes. king may play different with character six at the table versus character eleven at the table. And yes, that completely. gets really cool. And yeah. it's and, fun. And turn order can matter too. Like if I'm going to yeah. do this thing for you, is that going to set you up better, or should I leave this so you have it? Yeah, it's and that's something like a whole new way of thinking about Castle Panic that you've yep. never done. Before. Yep. And because turn order and you're not going to play, you can play the same six, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. That gives you so much flexibility and so much space for the players to try and figure out what they need to do in order to be successful. Yes. And that's yes. just really cool. I I yeah. love it when powers open up that play style mm -hmm. for play for it's people. really fun and it's something that like i said i've wanted to do in other games and uh we have like our dead panic game we had that kind of thing but this is the first time being able to bring it into the castle panic world um and uh yeah it's great uh and i was gonna say speaking of which i mentioned we have a character that can build a, a wall with either brick or mortar instead of both so one of the things that's fascinating is characters try usually players try to feed that player all the brick and mortar in the game which means mm -hmm. his hand is a little weird sometimes yep. but it's also the time when you're going to save the day and then every now and then you know you just got to discard a brick or mortar because you don't need it and you're desperate for another card and you could if you're that character it hurts it hurts <laughs> to watch somebody throw away something you can build no. a wall with. yeah so it's very good oh my very goodness good. Yeah, and so so you've talked about the book and uh, of your twenty pages of ideas that you want to implement. Were there mm -hmm. any things that any mechanics or anything that was initially set up to be put into either the second edition or the new expansion that you ended up pulling out, and why? Right. Um, for second edition, no. Like I said, that was a pretty straightforward. Let's clean it up. Let's make it look pretty. There wasn't anything there, but um, there's always stuff that gets left behind for um. um expansions uh yeah, this yeah. one part of it was there were characters that had abilities that again looked great on paper but just weren't fun or they got problematic they had like well what if this happens oh, here yeah. and it was like uh you know what i don't want people having to think that hard let's just make this fun let's cut mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. um and we also we knew 12 was a good number to stop at so that helped and then um the quests went round and round um oh i'm sure <laughs> i mean uh there's some that i i love the concept of a couple and they just they didn't work or or what was the real problem is they would take way too long like castle Manic's a fun game but it kind of has a time limit where you want yeah. this to be something you can play in a single night with a decent sit down and some of these quests were just like oh god this is like another <laughs> hour no yeah. it's not fun enough for that so yeah. we made it this like downloadable like hey if you want it kind of thing oh, at that's some cool. point but yeah. um I don't know. I don't like to give out stuff that I feel breaks the game or doesn't make it fun. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> no promises, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, that or maybe like a promo. That, that could also be yeah, like a that cool kind of promo. thing. We've done yeah. that before. Yeah. Promos can break the game a little. That's oh, yeah. most of ours do. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wouldn't be a promo if it didn't, right? So yeah, exactly. Okay, so I want to talk about because this is a little bit adjacent to the second edition, but you did a mm -hmm. My Little Castle Panic, right? 
Yes, my first Castle Panic. My yeah. first Castle Panic, yeah. Yeah, so, a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll just tell you how it came about. We were yeah. talking with um, some friends of ours, and we know some retailer friends that were thinking, boy, I wonder if you could do like a kid's version. And there are some kid versions of some pretty popular games. There's a kid's version of Catan, a Ticket to Ride Junior, I think it is. We've um, seen a surge like of them in the last like, yeah. five years. There's been a yeah. lot. And our, we were great. part of that because we yeah. were like, well, I think we could, you know, like, let's see what we need to focus on. And so we went back and we boiled it down to a core curriculum for preschoolers because the game itself is not so complicated that younger kids can't play it. But yeah. we're talking really young kids we wanted to focus yeah, on because yeah, yeah. the preschool market is its own thing. So we focused on matching shapes and colors, which is very much what these uh, kids are yeah. doing at this time and place. Um, and we made this game that's essentially, if you took Castle Panic, made it one winding path, and there's a, a, a like a red triangle on this shape and a blue circle on this shape and a green square here. And then your cards just have a green square on it with, of course, a cool little character about to jump yep, off yep, and save yep. the day. And uh, it follows the same basic principle, though. Of you, if you can match where a monster is on the space, you play your card and you put them in the dungeon. If you can't, you can ask for help if another player wants to help. Cool. And then the monsters, the little pile of monsters you pull, you put put them on the start space, and most of the time they're goblins, but there are three special monsters that like move the other monsters, or one jumps to the front of the line. Ooh, you have a, a yeah. single castle and a single wall at the end of this path, and if the wall's gone and a monster comes in, it takes out your castle, that's it, game's over. Yeah. So instead of like six towers and six walls, <laughs> you have one. And that's yep. it. Now there's a card that lets you rebuild the wall. Again, there's one of them. Uh, and it, I won't lie, I've lost it a few times. It's not it's not <laughs> easy to do. But uh, it has. we did this kind of on a whim, like, let's just see. We think this yeah. is a good idea. We think this market could work. It's becoming our best-selling game. Really? Oh, that's point, awesome. Honestly, units per year, it's it's getting dangerously close to Core Castle Panic. <laughs> and the reviews are amazing. That's awesome. That's yeah, so great. it's been super fun. No reading or required or anything. Yeah. So like if, if you got somebody like around that four, we found three year olds couldn't usually sit still long enough, but at four, man, this thing is like yeah? rocket fuel for them. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's great. I I'm so happy about that. That's that's incredible. How do you go around Okay, so like you have to play test that. Did you play test it with four year olds? We did. Or... We did okay. we took it to yeah. daycares and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, it fun. was yeah. fabulous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they were very articulate in how they did not like how these mechanisms interacted together, right? That... Oh, they'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have no filter, they, which is great. But one of the oh yeah, that's true. Was, yeah, yeah. We They're not there to save your feelings. Have... Oh no, no, they don't care. They will tell you what's dumb and what doesn't work. We got lucky that for the most part they they were happy with. It. One of the best parts was we literally took it to a daycare after they were before they were going to close, kind of thing, and we started playing with the kids. And the first it only plays up to four, so we had four with a few others looking on. As soon as that was done, they switched out, and then immediately the guys who had finished playing went and grabbed all their friends, brought them all over, and taught them how to play. So That's we awesome. just sat back good. and just made notes on what worked. That's what really good. good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. That's yeah. so fun. I, <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah I, oh, that's cool. Hmm. It was very, very fun to work. We've actually, because of that, we're looking at other uh, preschool games down the road that we want to work on. But, you know, we got to make sure they're as fun as that. So. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have to be, right? Okay, so we're back from our uh, Zoom break because Zoom <laughs> <laughs> Zoom kicks us off. But anyways, um, are there any plans to come out with an expansion to My First Castle Panic? Well, the good news is I have one already. It's called Castle Panic. You can go buy it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, we've talked about that, but... Um, Honestly, uh, it's a little bit weird from a marketing point of view. Yeah. Uh, kids' games don't have expansions. That's a we, that we would really have to push that hard. And honestly, by the time a kid is ready for more, we really are thinking at that point they could be playing the base game, yeah. not with any expansions, and probably with some help from mom and dad or whatever mm -hmm. still, but mm -hmm. it's pretty doable. Um, we kind of did that on purpose. That literally is the idea. Like, if they like this idea of stopping monsters from getting in, wait till they have to defend six castles. <laughs> oh, so. It's a little bit yeah, harder. So yeah, yeah, exactly. A little, little bit more to focus on. Yeah. So so probably not again, like I said, it's kind of it'd be filling in between a very narrow space. Right. And it would be hard to like sell that to all the stores that already carry everything. So that, yeah. that's very probably fair. not. That's very fair. <laughs> I, I had to ask. I was just kind of curious. Yeah, exactly. I have had people ask for a promo card for it though. Oh yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A I promo know. card for the game the or kid. a kid version promo in normal castle panic no no a a, a promo for my first castle panic like, oh, a, like cool, a, yeah if that fits that world kind of thing oh that's and it's sort of like no i'm not gonna no, no, like, <laughs> i'll think about it and maybe but it's like no man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay oh great so i gotta ask like so Castle Panic's been out 13 years. You have second edition now on the shelves that is selling. This has obviously been a very big part of your life. How does it feel to actually like have people playing this now, the second edition, <laughs> after they've been playing the, the original one for so long? 
forever. Well, the weird thing is, I haven't. It just got launched in the end of November, so I haven't actually come across it in the wild. So oh speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is going to be a, a trip because it's one <laughs> of those things. Where I remember I was at. Oh my gosh, I think it was a BGG or something. It yeah. might have been Origins when I saw somebody playing castle panic and it was still relatively new and i had to go to their table and be like are you guys okay are you having fun do you like this and explain who i was and they're like oh you can go now but yeah. it was uh it was just so weird to see and i haven't had that moment with second edition yeah yet. i want to see that and then i want to see somebody playing crowns and quests that's going to be really really fun and listen to them moan and shriek and cry um but uh no i i haven't uh had that moment yet i'm very excited for it though it's still weird to me to know that this is out there in so many places. Like we have some fans that played the game when they were kids and it's about time for them to start having their own kids now. So it's going to be like really weird to see this generational loop we're coming up that's on. Cool. That's cool. Uh, it's very cool. It's also like, yeah, that's why I'm gray hair and I wasn't from four. It makes sense. It's been a while. It's fair. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is there, are there anything on the horizon expansion or new games from Fireside that you can or are willing to talk about just a little bit? Well, we're always working on stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, no expansions right now. Castle Panic is kind of, uh, we're rolling out. I, I will say that's one thing is we're doing a staggered release of the previously released expansions. Okay. It's so like in January, you'll be able to get Wizard's Tower and then Engines of War and Dark Titan will come out, or I think it's Dark Titan, then Engines of War will come out uh, February, March. So those are, are new games coming out if you haven't picked up the expansions. But I am currently cranking away on our next release. It is going to be another co-op game. It is not in the world of Castle Panic. It is a mix of interesting mechanics that I won't go into yet in case anything changes because it's still being made. <laughs> it probably but will, it's based yeah. on an IP that we've picked up. Um, oh, cool. It's okay. a very kid-friendly IP. Okay. Um, it's still going to be a like family-level game, yep. though. It's going to be a little heavier weight. This isn't like a My First Castle Panic kind of thing. Um, and I'm really excited to keep working on it and get it out there. And when we have some more info, we'll be sharing. <laughs> yeah. Like around the same weight as Castle Panic? A little bit heavier, actually. Okay, It'll cool. be, um, cool. uh, if anybody out there remembers our game, Hot Shots, that we did, it was a dice rolling firefighting game. It'll be a little more like that with like lots of decisions to make and things can go wrong and you have to react to them. So, not quite as straightforward as Castle Panic, a little more complex, but this isn't going to be like an eight hour epic war game. Yeah. Or anything like that. We don't make those. <laughs> yeah, you're not. I, okay, so just side tangent because you said that and I needed to say something because I don't think I've talked about it yet. But I saw at PAX, you, were you at PAX Unplugged? I think you were. Not this year, no. Okay, no, you weren't? Okay. Fireside. Was Fireside? We had a, we, our yeah, booth was there being represented was by like, a friend of ours, but okay. I wasn't there personally. Okay, I was like, I saw Castle Panic, I thought, yeah. but also I saw a lot. So I may have just, but anyways, I, I passed like, there was somebody selling a game that was in like a chest and they had like those like war, like you could push units across the map. I was just like, like the old World War II movies. Wow. Yeah. Just like, oh my gosh. It's yeah. like, that's too much. That's okay. too much. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Justin, it has been fantastic having you on. Where can people find you? People want to uh, connect with Fireside. How can they do that? Right. Well, one of the easiest ways is firesidegames.com. We post all our new stuff up there. We have things you can download. You can check out games and all that good stuff up there. Um, and then we're on all the big social media. We're pretty big on Facebook. We do a lot of stuff there. Um, we have a really fun TikTok. If you want to see us do ridiculous <laughs> things and have me do uh, dress up like a wizard and stuff, I, I do that. I'm going to um, follow that right now. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining I, I will admit tiktok is actually a lot of fun to do yeah we have an instagram if you want pretty pictures too so uh, all that kind of stuff like that you can get us on all those places we also if people are interested we have a newsletter that we do that is once a month if we have anything to say so it's not spammy but it's really cool because we'd like to announce stuff on the newsletter first before we tell yeah. the regular public so oh, that's cool you can kind of yeah. get a little sneak peek so very cool. And all of those links to Fireside and Justice and Info is going to be down in the video description. So make sure that you go and follow along for all the new cool stuff that is coming out. But Justin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so very much for hanging out. And until next time, yeah, happy gaming. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> See you around.